All right, final section of this chapter, which is how our governments manage the money that they take in, how they handle your tax dollars. Um, so real quickly, these are your key terms that you should already have written down in your study guide or on your paper, but just to kind of explain a few things here, just so that we understand some of the words in the definitions. Hopefully we already know this, but I'm gonna go make sure that we do understand it. Expenditure is money that is spent. So any money that is spent is an expenditure. Income is money that is earned or money that is coming in or collected. So when we talk about surpluses, that means that there's more income than what you're spending. It's a deficit is the opposite. You're spending more than what is coming in. A balanced budget is the, it's the exact amount of what you're spending equals that of what's coming in. So two minutes, write down the notes in your notebook or on your worksheet, and then you can continue writing as I explain. Okay, so when you pay taxes, whether that's your income tax, property tax, excise tax, anything like that, it's all collected by the different levels of government that are responsible for that. So, you know, in majority of time, your income ta you have an income tax that goes to the st uh, state and to the federal government. Property taxes typically go to your state government and local governments. So each level has its own department or its own organization that collects these taxes. The one that most everybody knows is the IRS or the Internal Revenue Service. That is the federal agency that collects taxes. Uh, if it's uh, goods being shipped in from another country, that's US Customs. Or if you're traveling from abroad, coming back home, and you bring a bunch of things, you buy a bunch of things, and you bring them in with you, if they fit a certain criteria, you have to pay additional tax to get them into the country, or they're banned altogether. But that's another discussion. So you have these agencies that collect the taxes. Now that's pretty standard. Most everyday individual, again, taxes are paid through paychecks. So you don't really have to worry about anything except for when you fill out your tax forms when you start your job. So, but the main thing is, is that if it's like a property tax or it's, you've already purchased a good uh, or say like a car and you have to pay additional tax on it and you refuse to pay those taxes, those agencies can give you very large fines, higher than the amount that you actually owe on taxes. And if you continue to refuse to pay, you can be sent to prison, not to jail, to prison. So that's 
part of the collecting process. Then once your different levels of government have that money, they then have to spend it because it, would, it wouldn't make sense for a government to collect taxes and then not, uh, not actually spend that money on its own people. That's not how a democracy or a representative democracy works. So that's where budgets come in. Budgets are just the way that these governments say, okay, this is how much money we have and this is what we're spending it on. And the, we already know that about budgets from previous lessons. But the main part that you need to know about budgets are is that they are public record. So if you want to know what your city government is doing with your tax dollars, you can look up your city's budget. Um, that is prepared either by the executive at each level or the representative body. So if we're starting at the bottom, that would be, of course, the executive is the mayor, the representatives would be city council. Each one of them comes up with a budget and they either make amendments or changes to it and so that it can get approved. The state and federal level, you have your executive, state, governor, federal, president, they prepare a budget and then the uh, elected bodies vote on that. The, as well as to each House of Representatives can prepare a budget as well and they can make amendments to it, they can, make, they can remove things from it so that it does get approved and then that becomes public record so you can see what your government is spending money on. And the last thing before we move on, the reason that's important is that if you see the government, you, different levels of your government aren't spending your tax dollars the way that you think that they should be spent, then you need to find a candidate that is advocating for spending that money the way that you want to. This is another one of the factors that comes into picking someone to vote for. Okay, again, start writing the notes. And you can continue writing when the, after the timer hits zero as I begin explaining. All right, so when we get into spending money, this is where our last two topics uh, come into play here. So when we talk about, and a lot of what your vocabulary words are in reference to how we calculate the national debt, um, and that's all based on whether we have a balanced budget, whether we have surpluses or deficits, and we'll, we'll explain that continuing. So what a government wants is a balanced budget, is that the amount of money you're spending is the same amount of money as you're taking in. That's what you want a government to do. Because if they have, ex is that they're doing what they said. If they have extra money, 
that means that they're taking in too much. Now, and this can be a benefit, but it, it can also be something that when you do a budget like our governments do, if they're taking in too much money, that might mean that they have too high of a tax rate and they could lower that. Or that, you know, it might be that there is something wrong in the system. It might point to something negative. But generally, when we see, if we see a surplus um, in, our, in governments, what you'll find is they'll either divert that extra money to uh, other programs. So they'll boost other areas of the economy uh, or they will boost uh, like funding for the arts or for uh, public works projects, things like that, because they, they have the extra money to spend. Um, or in some cases too, they will give the money directly back to the people. So in my lifetime, uh, or at least the l last time we had a surplus was way back in the early 2000s. And the president at the time decided that instead of spending the money on other government programs, they would just give everybody a sizable, you know, a few hundred bucks back. And, you know, it worked really well for uh, the second President Bush uh, because people always like getting money. Um, and so it helped him get reelected. But that's a rarity in the modern era that we live in. Uh, most of the time we're dealing with deficits. So that means that the government is spending more than it's taking in in taxes. So in order to make their budgets, they have to borrow money. So every level of government can borrow money. Uh, state and local can borrow money from other levels of government. So generally what you'll have is like a state government might borrow money from our federal government. Uh, so that's another expenditure that our federal government has to, has to pay for. Um, our, the federal government can borrow from other countries because they, they have the ability to do so. State and cities, uh, unless approved by Congress, uh, can't borrow money from other countries. I mean, it's not to say that they can't, it's just they have to go through an approval process. So uh, what this means is, is that a lot of states, and it uh, tends to be uh, those states that we consider to be impoverished states, uh, a lot of them are in the South, they borrow from the federal government very heavily, or they are subsidized by the federal government, um, meaning that the federal government gives them money so that they can operate, they can meet their budgets. Uh, the federal government, as we said, borrows from, can borrow from other countries. And this is what creates the narrative that you, you, particularly you get in election years where people claim that, you know, China owns the United States. It is true that ch we do borrow, uh, borrow heavily from China and China is, has a lot of money invested in the United States, but so do several other large countries. Uh, we do not just borrow from one specific country, um, and we do our best to try and pay that back. But until we get a balanced budget, which in my lifetime has happened once, um, that's, that's not really, we're, we're going to continue adding to the debt uh, every year. The last thing is audits. Audits are very important because they're there to ensure that First, your governments, local, state, and federal, are spending the money properly. So in the past, you've had a few occurrences. It's not common practice, but a government will issue a budget, and then the money they say is going to this program or that program doesn't get there. And so that's when either the IRS or a state agency calls in an accountant to go back over all the expenditures and the income to see what's going on and where the problem occurred. Most times it's just an accounting error or you know, something in the bureaucracy and the, and the minutia of government didn't operate properly, but times you do have that a, a representative or a, an executive at either level of government decides, well, they're going to take a little bit of that money and they're going to divert that into their offshore banking account and, you know, 
because no one's going to miss that money. But the auditors catch it. So if they find out that the dollars are misspent, they can, because they're given this power by, their, by each level of government, if they called in to audit, they can direct those levels of government to uh, take that money and get it to the program in which they stated in the budget, because that's what the public knows, that's what they told the public that they were going to do, so they have to do that. Um, if it is an individual who has diverted tax dollars to themselves personally, they can face prison time and very large fines. Um, the times that it has happened, if typically financially ruins somebody unless they can turn, you know, turn their experience into like a book or a movie or something like that. And then audits are not just for different levels of government or for large corporations. They can, they're also for individuals as well. So if you are truthful and honest on your tax forms, you literally have no worry about being audited by the IRS or any, or any state or local tax agency. But if you are lying on your tax records, so if you are, for instance, if you have your own business and you, uh, and you actually have to pay taxes uh, at, the, at the end of every year, and so, and you claim that you're not making as much as you actually made. That's defrauding the federal government. So you can be audited, and if the auditor finds that your books don't match up, is that what you are claiming to earn is far lower or different than what you claim to the uh, IRS, A, they will get that money, B, they will give you a fine, and that will be a very large fine, and C, if it is a, a long enough period of time in which you've defrauded the government, you can face prison time. And then you lose pretty much everything. You can't operate your business from prison unless you have done this with like a large multinational corporation with hundreds or thousands of employees. So, but this, and two, this also means that's if you're a business owner. If the everyday person, when you fill out your tax forms to start a new, a new job, and they ask you, you know, how many dependents you have. If you lie about that and you get audited, you can face fines and penalties for that. If you're claiming more dependents so that you get, you pay less in taxes and you receive more tax credits, that's considered defrauding the federal government or defrauding your state government. And again, you can be fined and if it's happened over a long enough period of time and you can't pay that money that you owe, you can face prison time, plus the money you owe, and plus the fines that they're going to throw on top of you. So the moral of this story is don't lie on your tax records because they, if they find out, it can be a serious, serious piece of business. And that's where we'll stop.